Hello everyone, Lytro Storm here, and today I'm bringing you guys another Walking Dead What If. Now this one is probably one of the most requested and most covered What If scenarios on the show. And that is something to do with Shane surviving his encounter with Rick in Season 2. Whether it's what if Shane survived just blatantly, what if Shane rejoined the group and turned good, or what if he killed Rick, which is actually what is going to be happening in this scenario. That's right, we're going to be talking about if Shane had actually successfully killed Rick instead of vice versa in Season 2, Episode 12. So, dramatic spoilers for the entire series. Obviously, I've already just spoiled what happens in Season 2. So, yeah. Make sure you check out the show if you haven't already. It's on Netflix. Usually, just watch it. It's worth your time. But anyway, time to get into what is probably the most requested Walking Dead What If now. So we start off in season two, episode 12 of the show with Rick and Shane out in the field. This time when Rick tries to talk Shane down, Shane is going to recognize this as a police tactic. Him realizing this allows for him to see Rick's plan of stabbing him coming. So when he hands him the gun, Shane will shoot him right there. This causes Rick to fall to the ground as he swings his knife and Shane's feelings are going to be very weird here. He was a very ambiguous character as to how much he cared for Rick in that moment. So I'm not going to pretend like I know what he he would say to him. I get the feeling Rick would try and use his dying breaths to say something positive to Shane though, maybe telling him that there was a way back. Anyway, Shane sits with Rick in his last moments before Carl walks up. This time, he sees his father dead and runs over to him crying. Carl didn't know that Rick killed Shane until after he revealed it to the group, so he's not going to know that Shane killed Rick here either. Shane tells Carl that they need to head out, but the boy is very hesitant to leave. This forces Shane to try and continue urging him to go, which leads to Rick coming back as a walker and attacking Carl. Shane had no idea this was going to happen as he didn't believe Rick was bitten, so he quickly reaches for his gun and shoots Rick in the head. With the two shots ringing out, Shane tells Carl that they need to get out of there, but Carl asks what happened. Shane tells the boy that they got attacked by Randall and that's why Rick was shot. He tried taking him back, but he bled out along the way. Shane then hands Rick's revolver to Carl and the two head toward the farm. After that, the season finale would go the same, just with Shane replacing Rick. So Shane and Carl burn down the barn and stuff like that. They basically get this really cool dynamic where they're working together. Though when Shane sees Herschel fighting off the walkers on his porch, he decides to save him in order to make him seem more favorable to Maggie and Beth, rather than what Rick did, which was just genuinely saving Herschel. But if Shane saves their father, they will probably forget his past actions and elect him as the new leader of the group. So he saves the old man, taking him in a vehicle with Carl. The rest of the group is able to find each other and the people begin to wonder where Rick is. But Daryl already has the answer. He reveals what he and Glenn saw last night. Randall was dead, with footprints following him. He had his neck snapped and there was blood on a tree. This immediately indicates that Shane's whole story was a complete lie, as there's no way Randall would have gotten the jump on Rick and then also been found by Daryl at the same time as a walker. And even if that were the case, the footprints and the blood on the tree, none of it makes any sense. Shane tries to defend himself laughing and asking if they really thought he'd kill his best friend, but Daryl simply replies that they weren't really friends anymore. They constantly argued and fought. There's only one clear answer as to how Rick and Shane go off together and only one comes back. Shane realizes what is about to happen, so he tries grabbing Carl and aims his gun at everyone. He tells him that he's just going to take Lori and Carl and go, but realistically, this is not going to go well for him. The entire group is against him, so he's either going to be killed or outcasted. I'll say he gets forced away in order to keep the story going. So Shane is basically forced out on his own, and so he wanders off. But that doesn't mean he's gone for the story. We'll come back to him in a bit, but first I want to talk about how the group is without Rick. And you need to get used to this as well. We're going to be switching back and forth from Shane and the group multiple times throughout the series. Meanwhile, the group realizes that they're in shambles and none of them can agree on what to do. Glenn also reveals that Randall turned into a walker despite having no bites, so that means you don't have to be bitten to turn. I think Carol would want Daryl to take up a leading position, but Daryl is not all about that especially not in season two. Glenn also hasn't really matured enough yet to step up either, so I think T-Dog would propose a better way. If none of them can fill Rick's shoes, then they'd work together. In the comics, when Rick becomes unhinged, the group made a council. So let's say they do that here. T-Dog, Daryl, and Glenn are the three leaders, as they're the ones who are the most fit. 
Daryl is just an all-around strong guy and good survivor, Glenn is very resourceful, and T-Dog is human enough to make smart calls. So they'll work it out somehow. Anyway, the eight-month time skip would still occur with the group all surviving and still finding the prison. Because none of them quite have the leadership skills of Rick, it would take more deliberating to come up with a plan to clear out the prison, but their plan does eventually end up the same. It would also take a lot longer to accomplish and have a few close calls since they're missing the extra man. Though, I think this would probably inspire Carol to step up more. Anyway, we need to get back to Shane as promised. So I think at some point, Shane would meet up with Michonne and Andrea. This is pretty good for him as now he has that connection from before. Knowing that he's lost his hold on Lori and Carl, he's going to do his best to forget them and move on as he needs to focus on his survival. This leads to him kind of rekindling that fling he had with Andrea before. He tries his best to find the same love he has for Lori in Andrea, but this doesn't quite work. He also never tells Andrea about what he did. He just says that he got separated from the group the same as her. Michonne is very skeptical of Shane, feeling like there's more to him than he's letting on, but she can never really place it. So the three survive together for a while, with Shane trying to lead them. Michonne doesn't like the whole leadership idea though, so Shane is even less of a friend to her. It's mainly just both her and Shane care about Andrea, so that's why they stick together. The three eventually get found by Merle and the governor's group, and Shane is very hesitant to go along with Merle. But he doesn't really have much choice as Andrea is sick and fighting back won't do them any good. So Merle takes them back to Woodbury, where they are welcomed by the governor. Of course, like Michonne, our big dog Shane is not chilling with the governor at all. Not only does he have a general suspicion about him, but over time he can see that Andrea is beginning to fall for him. And he definitely does not like that at all. Again, Andrea is more than just someone Shane likes a little. She is what helps him forget and move on from his insane possession over Lori and Carl. If he loses her, he will regress to his old self. So when Michonne tries to get her to leave, Shane does the same, but it fails and he reluctantly chooses to stay with her. Michonne goes off alone and gets attacked by Merle and his goons, but is saved by none other than Shane. He attacks Merle from behind and the two get into a scrap, but because Shane had the advantage, he's able to pull a gun on Merle and take him down. But he decides to leave him alive, so that way now he can confess what happened and take him back to Woodbury. Michonne agrees to go back as well since she wants to prove to Andrea what she saw in the governor's twisted ways. Shane forces his way back into Woodbury by threatening Merle, and this leads to him telling all the people what the governor's men tried to do. Of course, Philip denies this, asking if they'd really believe something strangers and citing all the positive things he's done. Shane calls his bluff and Andrea is quickly confused and not knowing what to do, but she believes her friend. So she manages to convince the governor to let all three of them go in exchange for Merle. The plan succeeds, and so Michonne, Shane, and Andrea go back on the road together. Meanwhile, at the prison, a lot of stuff happens. Herschel gets bitten on the leg, the gang meets the prisoners, and even has some problems with them. They chop off Herschel's leg, as I still think they would have planned for that, and Carol manages to save his life just barely. Glenn kind of takes up the role of Rick here, since Rick isn't here to make them stay with Herschel. Tomas still ends up killing Big Tiny when he gets bitten, and tries to kill Glenn as well. But I think that Glenn wouldn't just kill him, and instead he'd explain what Tomas did, so Daryl would kill him instead with the crossbow. Then Andrew tries attacking him, but is stopped by Glenn. When Andrew runs inside, Glenn lets him in, since he hasn't really done that much. The group lets the three remaining prisoners go back into their new cell block, but then they want to join the real group. T-Dog ends up being the only one to accept them though, so he gets outvoted. I do think Andrew would get pretty angry about this, so he'd set up the walkers like he did originally. This leads to the deaths of both T-Dog and Lori, and Judith is also born at the same time. When Daryl and Oscar go to the generator room, Andrew attacks Daryl, which leads to Oscar using Daryl's crossbow to shoot Andrew. After realizing that they lost two members of their group, Glenn becomes pretty angry at himself that he didn't just leave Andrew to die. Although little does he know that if he had done that, the same result would have happened. So now we can move on to when Glenn and Maggie go on their supply run. From the corner, Shane would see them while he, Andrea, and Michonne were passing through. He knows that he can't let Andrea go near them, so he tells them to wait up and that they can pass through once Maggie and Glenn go inside the building. But Michonne senses that something is up, so she walks ahead and sees the two. On top of that, she also catches a sight of Merle, who has now also showed up. 
He surprises Glenn and Maggie like he did canonically, and they talk. Andrea overhears Glenn's voice talking about Daryl, and so she makes herself known as well, aiming her gun at Merle, and Shane follows and does the same. At that point, Merle is just laughing. Not only has he found Glenn, but also the people he was looking for as well. Glenn and Maggie also see Shane, and Glenn gets angry. So now, everyone has guns on everyone, and this allows Merle to take advantage of the confusion and grab Maggie. Glenn, Andrea, and Shane all have their guns aimed, but Glenn yells at them to drop them so that they can save Maggie. Shane reluctantly agrees, looking off and nodding, annoyed. Merle picks Maggie up and starts walking backward toward the front seat, but as he's talking about how they're going to do this nicely, a sword slices his throat. Blood would begin to pour onto Maggie as she frees herself and Merle falls to the ground. From behind him is Michonne, who had snuck around behind him. So now Merle bleeds out on the ground and everyone reunites. But Glenn is still angry at Shane for killing Rick, so he tells the truth to Andrea. Upon learning of Shane's lies, Andrea is completely disgusted, and this confirms Michonne's prior suspicions just when she was starting to work together with him too. Shane, realizing that he's had everyone turn against him once again, asks if Lori and Carl are still alive. Maggie says that Lori died, but she had a baby. Glenn butts in and says that that's all they're telling him and that they're going to leave now. So Andrea and Michonne join Glenn and Maggie and go to the prison. Shane is left on his own once again, not quite knowing where to go. He could try and follow them, but doing that won't help him. Unless... He realizes what he's going to do now and chases after them on foot, trying not to be seen. Once they return to the prison, he realizes where they're located, and so he heads back the way he came. Daryl and the gang reunite with Andrea and meet Michonne. They also have found Carol by this point as well, so that's a dub. Glenn tells Daryl that they had to kill Merle, and this makes Daryl both sad and angry. Of course, he doesn't blame him, his brother probably had it coming. But he needs to see it for himself. So he heads out and finds Merle as a walker. He seemed to have been following something, but Daryl didn't really notice. He began crying and started fighting with the walker like he did with Merle's original death. Daryl ends up killing his zombified brother, but after a little bit of crying, he is then hit in the head and falls unconscious. Shane looks down at him, picking him up and putting him on Daryl's bike and driving back to Woodbury. And that's where we're gonna leave off with part one. Yeah, I know you guys were probably expecting Shane to lead the group, but let's just be realistic. Daryl and Glenn already found out the Randall story was bull, so there was no way that was ever going to happen. But I do think that Shane and Andrea's dynamic actually being more developed, especially with the governor coming in, also with Michonne, I feel like all of that combined is actually a really cool way to take Shane's character, and then having everything unravel as the new group returns is also really cool. So now we've got Shane with an unconscious Daryl heading back to Woodbury. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this part and hopefully you're looking forward to the next one because I know I am. It was really fun to write. But anyway, that's gonna be all for this video. But as always, tell me if you like this part, tell me what you think will happen next, comment your request for future videos and subscribe. Thank you for watching, have a great day.